when I read the paper, it does seem to sort of brainwash me that I say to myself, well, I've read a lot of stuff about GMOs and pesticides and chemicals and modern agriculture that's very, very disturbing, but I'm not really an expert, and they keep telling me that we have all these 7 billion plus people and that we have to have the chemicals or we can't grow enough food to feed the world. And, and you know, and that just because I'm an American, I'm not thinking about the poor people in Laos and Cambodia that need food. So can we, without chemicals, pesticides, GMOs, and modern agriculture, are you sure we can grow enough food to feed the world? Thanks. It, this is another example of disinformation put out by the pesticide industry. In fact, the word we use for them now are the poison cartels. That includes pesticides and GMOs. The world at the moment produces three times the amount of food we need to feed the world. At the same time, Despite 70 years of industrial agriculture, of using pesticides and fertilizers, we have more food insecure people on this planet than any time in history. Over 850 million people are food insecure. What we mean by food insecure is that there are times of the year where they go to bed hungry, where children don't eat for days. On top of that, we have another billion people. They get it, technically, they get enough calories, but they're empty calories. They don't get enough minerals or vitamins. For instance, in India, we see at least 200 million women who suffer from iron deficiencies, others who suffer from beta carotene deficiencies. So there's almost half the world's population that are undernourished, despite the fact we produce three times the amount of food. On the other side of the equation, we have uh, more people who are actually seriously overweight and obese than those people who are undernourished. The problem isn't one of food production, it is a problem of distrib distribution. Being able to grow more food in Kansas or in Australia or, or knocking down more of the Amazon to grow GMO soybeans does not feed the world and never has. Most of these people who are food insecure are in the developing nations like Cambodia, like Africa, like Argentina or, or um, Peru. How do we feed them? We feed them with local organic systems. And I know from experience, because I was the president of the International Organization for the Organic Movement. And in our time, two United Nations organizations did a study looking at organic programs in Africa. And this looked at over two and a half million acres where we put in organic agriculture with a, over a million farmers and 160 projects. And where we worked with these traditional farmers, we increased their yield by more than 100%. We took these populations from going hungry for several months of the year into food security, not only that, into prosperity. We change the lives of these communities. We've done this in Asia, we've also done this in Latin America. So we don't need GMOs, we don't need pesticides. All we need is simple training and education on existing good organic practices. We will double the food supply in the areas that need it and actually get it where it is needed. And the irony is we could do that. We could end food, po food insecurity tomorrow for less than the cost that it takes to develop one GMO. I also wanted to add that 
a lot of our prime farmland in America is used not even to grow food. This GMO corn and soy used for ethanol, goes to cows, goes to processed foods. So it's a system that's really, as Mitchell was saying, you know, <laughs> feeding children is not a good reason to grow food. That really is aligned with the thinking of these companies. I talked earlier about Jeff Simmons from Ilanco. He's a great evangelist for how we need to double down on um, today's industrial food system. We need to double down on factory farms, get more animals in these farms. They're genetically engineering animals to fit better in confined feeding operations. I mean, these are the sorts of what's behind these ideas of we need to feed the, ni feed the nine, feed the nine billion. It's a hashtag, it's a YouTube channel, it's Instagram, it's Twitter, and you'll find videos of this guy, Jeff, giving very impassioned speeches about how producing more is about feeding more. But as Andre said, that's absolutely opposite of the facts. And we need to be using our farmland to grow food that feeds people and not corporate profits. I do want to add a couple notes of sobriety. We do have a growing human population. We are on course with current trends that we will need to produce more food in the next 50 years than we have in all of human history for humans up to this point. And that does take a toll on our farmland. And our current agricultural system is so unsustainable that we are eroding our topsoil, we are depleting our aquifers, we are destabilizing our climate, and we only have 60 years of farmable soil left on planet Earth. UN researchers estimate that by the year 2050 at current trends, we'll have half the uh, growable land per capita, per human on Earth, that we did in 1950. So we are on a collision course, if you look at those trends, with uh, less and less farmland that works, less and less water, less and less climate stability, and more and more people. And it, it is alarming, and it is concerning. And I want to be real about that. And in the very short term, current mass production systems produce a lot of calories per acre with a lot of pesticides very unsustainably. However, we're wasting most of these calories by feeding them to livestock. In the United States, uh, we feed most of our corn and soy to livestock. Worldwide, 83% of agricultural land is used in livestock production. It produces 18% of the world's calories, 37% of the world's protein, but over 80% of the world's agricultural land. In fact, if you took all of the agricultural land currently being used for livestock, and you've, we, the world just theoretically went vegan, we would free up an area of land equal to the United States, China, India, the European Union, and all of Australia combined. That's how much land we would save. So we'd have a lot of space then to do stuff like maybe get a little bit less yield per, per acre to have a way more nutritional profile, to have organically grown food, to focus on vegetables rather than just corn and soy and super high volume products, we would have way more land that we could turn back into forests so we could sequester carbon out of the atmosphere or put up solar panels or windmills or all sorts of other stuff that we could do with that land. So I think that it, it is insincere for people to say that we must do this pesticide, GMO, unsustainable treadmill that mortgages the future of our planet and our children so that we can produce maximal yield right here and now while feeding massive amounts of grain and soy to livestock and then to think that that makes any sense whatsoever. So we as consumers can eat lower on the food chain, and then we can eat more organic, and we can absolutely walk with dignity and say, I am creating a safer world, and a healthier world, and a more sustainable world, and I am having a smaller ecological footprint, and it takes less land to grow my food than most of the people around me, and it is more sustainable, and by the way, it's a whole lot healthier. And well, by I remember, the way, uh, oh, go ahead, Jeff. I'll just stay one sentence. GMOs don't increase average yield, as opposed to organic, which can double yield. Absolutely. And if we stopped facilitating the development of huge tracts of land, as Ocean was talking about, for export crops 
and for monocropping, genetically engineered crops for animal feed, we would have more than enough land to feed the people of the world. Uh, people would be able to feed ourselves or themselves. We wouldn't need to think of us feeding them or something like that. And there would be plenty of space for which people can reclaim the land and start developing the kind of crops that they need locally to eat instead of being shunted off the land into export zones to produce, in Haiti it was to produce clothing for, the, we, uh, we had documents from the International Monetary Fund back in the 80s where they, it was one of the only smoking gun documents that I ever saw in which they consciously said in writing that our goal is to remove one third of the peasantry from the land move them into export zones and then take over that land to produce coffee and export crops for US, China, Japan, elsewhere. So yeah, so that's one of the, so that's a policy issue of the United States and other countries. And we need to, we need to affect that policy. I remember, anybody here remember when Ronald Reagan was on TV and he said, ketchup, oh, that's a vegetable. And I, you know, that stuck in my mind all these years because he was using that to say, oh, people, little kids in school are getting well fed. They have ketchup. They have vegetables. What are you talking about? So I kind of think that mindset is a similar mindset to some of the approaches that are being taken today. Even Jimmy Carter, who has gone, he's written extensive articles in favor of genetic engineering using exactly this question of there won't be enough food to feed the world, so we need to feed them genetically engineered and grow genetically engineered food. Um, Jeff is right with his simple answer. Maybe I should keep mine as short as yours from now on. <laughs> that was great, it was right. It doesn't increase yield, so what are we talking about? Can I just speak to this as well? At the moment, most of the Amazon and other areas are being cleared for uh, genetically modified soy. And this is actually being mostly shipped to China and to the European Union to feed animals in confined animal feeding operations, CAFOs. I prefer to call them animal concentration camps because they are the equivalent of the Dachau our switches of animals. But in terms of feeding the world, for every 10 tonnes of vegetable protein, you produce one ton of animal protein. How inefficient is that? Not only on one side, we are destroying some of our world's most precious biodiversity. On the other side, we are, we are creating incredible animal cruelty. In the middle, we're transporting this material you know, for unbelievable distances and causing climate change. And the net outcome is we need to produce 10 times as much protein as the protein we eat. You know, it, it is idiocy. There is no logic. How, you, know, you say we need genetically modified um, crops so we can continue to do this. It is beyond logic. There is no need for this. It's all about profits and nothing else.